Welcome to the most horrible history lesson ever, or should that be the best ever? Bits of history that your teachers could never tell you, with all the gory bits left in. <coughs> Kellogg's has teamed up with Horrible Histories, and with the writer Terry Deary, uh, that's me, <coughs> to bring you a series of disgusting tales from some of the most famous periods in history. Some of them are so foul, you may even have to hold your nose and close your eyes as you listen to them. This is one of six CDs in the series, available free on special packs of cornflakes, frosties, cocoa pops and rice krispies. Each 30 minute CD is exclusive to Kellogg's, so you'll be one of the few people to know about some of the darkest secrets from the days of old. You may just want to eat your breakfast before pinning back your ears. Enjoy! Hello, I'm Terry Deary, author of the Horrible Histories books, and I'm here to tell you about a period of history that was truly horrible, the age of Queen Victoria and her vile Victorian people. Because history can be horrible. People in the past did dreadful things to one another. They still do, but in the past it was more personal. They put their greedy, grubby hands on you and grabbed what they wanted. They didn't care how much they hurt you. So the victims looked to the law to protect them, and by the 1800s, the laws had become more cruel than the crimes. I mean, if you were caught chopping down someone else's tree, you could be hanged. What sort of policeman would arrest you for chopping down a tree? Special branch, I suppose. <laughs> The laws became so cruel, you could feel just as sorry for the villains as the victims. The prisons were full of poor people who pinched pennies by picking pockets. Posh people didn't have to mug and murder to make money. They owned the filthy factories and the murky mines where the poor slaved and suffered. Many mine owners didn't mind how many died in their damp and gas-filled pits as long as they made lots of money. So, in the dark days of Queen Victoria, who were the real villains? The poor pilfering people of the slums? Or the mean miserly men in their massive mansions? And how would you have got on in those terrible times? What you need is a history that tells you about those vile and villainous Victorians. Now, where will you find a history like that? As it happens, you are listening to it! When Victoria was Queen, the poor workers of Britain were crowding into dark, damp and filthy, dirty little houses. Well, the houses were handy for the foul factories that belched out the choking smoke. The factories that paid them a pitiful wage. So the workers suffered the slums. But one class of people liked the dingy streets and the black back lanes. The criminals. The slums were home to whizzers, van draggers, screws. You don't know what they did? Oh, very well, I'll tell you. Whizzers were pickpockets. Van draggers stole from the backs of horse-drawn vans. Screws burgled houses. The really villainous ones carried squirters. No, 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 not water pistols, you dummy. Real pistols. And these whizzers with squirters were not afraid of bogies, neither. A, a bogey was a policeman. Now here's a word you really needed to know if you're going to survive in Victoria's England, garrotta. In the 1850s and 1860s, a new terror hit the city streets, garrotting. A Victorian villain explained what garrotting was and some of the secret language of the criminals. I'm a Toby, you see, a Toby, a street robber. First, I pick my victim. Someone with lots of drops in his pit, um, that is, lots of money in his wallet. And a nice kettle and tackle, of course, uh, that is to say, watch and chain. Of course, they won't end it over without a fight. So, what do I do? That's when I go rots them. I grab him by the neck, and then I, 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 I do a secret move known only to us Well, I can't even tell you who it's known to. That's a secret too. If I told you, I'd have to grunt you. <laughs> By 1863, there were 115 garrotting cases in London and other cities were starting to copy. 
What did half of those men do when they weren't robbing people in the alleys? Were they teachers? No. Were they policemen? No. Were they cab drivers? No. I mean, yes, they were cab drivers. They rode in horse-drawn taxis. Sort of, first they taxis you, then they attaxis you. Oh. <clears throat> a newspaper reported, London is a battlefield of raging cabmen. Of course, there are always honest people who will make money out of your fears. In the 1860s, a new type of men's clothing appeared. Scared of garrotters? Protect yourself with our wonderful new leather collar. Wear this tough leather collar round your neck and feel safe. No garrotter can harm you while you wear this wonderful invention. Smart and comfortable too. Only two shillings each. Of course, the villainous Victorians couldn't be allowed to get away with their vicious crimes. When they were caught, they were punished, and I mean punished. Ask yourself this. Would you nab a kettle and tackle if you could be whipped for it? <laughs> Not only did they beat you, they even wrote a report on the beating. Here's an actual report from Leeds Jail. <laughs> 